Hi everybody, I'm Simon Barthold from Salmon Running and I'm going to talk to you right now about one of my favourite things in the whole world, the foot and the biomechanics of running. Now this little guy is an amazing piece of engineering. There are 26 bones in each foot, about a quarter of all the bones in your whole body. There are 33 joints, there are over a hundred ligaments that stop it from falling apart and all sorts of other things that are very important here, including the muscles that make it function. Really incredible piece of engineering. Um, I, no one could do it any better, and it's a very, very important part of the human anatomy. Now, what I want to try to explain to you today is some very basic biomechanics. It's so important when we're talking about running product that we understand the biomechanics of human movement. And we're going to divide it up into um, some pretty simple um, bite-sized chunks for you today. The first thing to understand when we talk about a gait cycle is that it's divided into two separate sections. The first one is the swing phase, which is pretty self-explanatory. It simply means that one foot is airborne and it's swinging through space. The second and far more important phase of gait is called the stance phase of gait. Now, the stance phase of gait obviously means that you've got the foot in contact with the ground, and that's what we're going to focus on. When we talk about the stance phase of gait, we look at it from zero to 100%. Zero is when the foot first contacts the ground and 100% is when you toe off. And one complete gait cycle is contact on one heel to the next contact on that same heel of that same foot. That's one complete gait cycle. Okay, so that's pretty simple. What actually happens during a gait cycle? What do we expect to see? You've heard a lot of terms over the years. You've heard about pronation and supination. And pronation especially has been talked about in hushed tones. It's almost like some kind of disease. But the most important thing you need to know is that pronation of the foot is completely and utterly normal. And if you don't pronate your foot, you won't run or walk properly. So it's very, very important. So what happens in the three phases of gait, uh, the stance phase of gait? So we divide this up into contact, which may or may not be at the heel. It might be further forward. And then we talk about mid stance or foot flat. And then we go into propulsion phase of gait. Each one of these separate phases uh, has a specific purpose. So the purpose of contact is the shock attenuating phase. We know that when you run, you've got about three times your body weight going through your system. So you imagine standing, two guys my size on my shoulders, and then going up onto your big toe. That's exactly what happens when you run. So it's very, very important that we have shock attenuation at that time. The other thing that happens at contact is that we need the foot to adapt to any unevenness in the terrain. So you can think about rocks, um, any sort of obstacle that might vary the, uh, the, the terrain, the foot needs to recognise that. So at contact what happens is the knee flexes and the foot pronates. Just like a car's shock absorbers, very, very normal, very, very important. The foot continues to pronate to mid stance or foot flat and then it must remain very, very stable. Mid stance is about 50% of the whole time your foot is on the, on the ground. So mid stance is the stability phase of, uh, of the gait cycle. We then go from mid stance into the propulsive phase of gait. Propulsion is signalled by the instant the heel leaves the ground. As soon as the heel leaves the ground, you are in propulsion. The propulsion phase is when the foot starts to resupinate. So moving back in this direction, and when the foot resupinates, all the bones pack closely together and the foot becomes very, very rigid. Now you can imagine the purpose of that. The purpose is to make sure you've got a nice rigid lever so you can get effective propulsion, nice force generation as you move forward in, uh, into the next, uh, the next stance phase of gait. So that's it. It's actually pretty simple if you break it down and you think of contact, mid stance, propulsion and exactly what the foot is supposed to be doing at each one of those times. When it comes unstuck, it's not so much a case of are you over pronating, it's more a question of when you're pronating. So if you're still pronating when you're in the propulsion phase of gait, it has a knock-on or a flow-on effect all the way up what we call the kinetic chain, so all the way up the system. It affects your knees, it affects your hips, it affects your low back. So the timing of those events is incredibly important. That's probably enough for now. Um, in, an, in another video, we're going to link this into how you might build footwear that assists with this normal and very important foot function. So bye for now. All right.